Today, we're going to be talking about Logstash and what we are doing to make it easier to adopt the Elastic Common Schema. We'll provide primers for both Logstash and ECS, show how ECS can be used from Logstash plugins, and provide steps for opting out of the transition. Hello, I'm Rai Biesmeyer, one of the principal engineers working on the Logstash project. As you likely know, Logstash is a tool that facilitates user-defined pipelines for transforming and enriching a stream of events. It is a part of the Elastic Stack, but events from those pipelines are not constrained to the Elastic Stack. Our users define their pipelines using a domain-specific language to connect input plugins with codec plugins through a sequence of filter plugins to output plugins. It's really all about the plugins. But what are plugins? Logstash input plugins create events, often with the help of codec plugins. Codec plugins either transform an arbitrary sequence of bytes into a structured event or the other way around. Filter plugins transform and enrich batches of events. And output plugins persist batches of events elsewhere. Logstash allows users to tie any number of these plugins together in a pipeline in a manner that addresses their specific data needs. Here we have a simple pipeline definition. It includes a single TCP input plugin that uses the Ceph codec to create events from inbound data. A couple filters the batches of events are conditionally routed to in sequence, and a single Elasticsearch output plugin. In the real world, pipeline configurations can grow to be thousands of lines and can invoke a sequence of hundreds of plugins with layered conditional logic to mutate and enrich events before eventually routing them to outputs like Elasticsearch, S3, or even other Logstash pipelines. And while Logstash is a part of the Elastic Stack, we know that not every Logstash pipeline in the real world routes to Elasticsearch. We're here for those too. Logstash is powered by its plugin ecosystem. Plugins are versioned and packaged independently and are completely independent of the Elastic Stack release versioning. This provides a number of advantages. We can release fixes to plugins more rapidly than the Elastic Stack release cadence, and users can also build and maintain their own plugins that use the same APIs as the plugins we bundle with Logstash Core. Historically, there was no single standard for how a plugin was supposed to enrich data. Many plugins originated as donations to the Logstash project from outside sources, and the more widely they were adopted, the harder they became to change. While some plugins require explicit configuration for absolutely everything, many implicitly populate fields on the event in their own way. This can lead to schema conflicts when certain plugins are used in combination with each other, or when they target an Elasticsearch index that also contains data from another source. As the Elastic Stack has evolved, we've discovered that when data from many sources fit into a common schema, each source becomes a value multiplier. For example, we can correlate events indicating high latency to a destination address with other events that have CPU or memory metrics about that specific host. We leverage shared schema heavily in our observability dashboards. The Elastic Common Schema is a community-driven schema that allows us to encode the semantic meaning of a field into that field's name so that when two or more data sources describe the same thing, they can be used together. We have long wanted to move into a world where a brand new Logstash user gets ECS compatible events without having to manually remap each and every field produced by their incoming data. But more importantly, we needed to avoid breaking existing pipelines. This is a part of why Logstash is a little late to the game of adopting ECS. I would like to show you three simple demos to set a baseline for behavior. We're looking mainly to show complexity and these scripts will be made available. Here, we'll be parsing log lines encoded with the common event format, also known as Ceph. Ceph encodes a fixed number of fields at the beginning of each line and provides a framework for generic key value pairs with shorthand naming. Our example is very long with many extension fields. Our pipeline config is pretty straightforward. A regular input uses the Ceph codec and the rest is boilerplate to make it work with the demo capture tool. When we run Logstash, as you can see, the resulting structured event is very flat and really Ceph-centric. It won't mix well with other data sources and has ECS conflicts like the top-level host field. In ECS, the top-level host is an object with many attributes, an IP, a name, geographic data, and more. The attribute populated here really should be host, host name. For the next demo, we have a simple GOIP enrichment. I've set us up with the simple inputs, a top level host that has an IP address. And our pipeline is pretty straightforward too. We have a single GeoIP filter instance configured to enrich the host's IP. 
This results in an event that is, uh, has a top-level GOIP field, which is a little problematic. It does not contain any context as to what it's referring to, and while it does include a geo point structure for the coordinates, the shape of the remaining fields aren't quite ECS geotype either. Okay, finally we have a simple grok extraction. We have two inputs this time, an HA proxy log and a generic access log. This re represents a pipeline that is handling inputs from multiple applications and systems, which is common in the real world. We can scroll and see that the HA proxy line is pretty long. Our pipeline includes a grok filter that matches for either. The result is an explosion of top level fields, including a lot of useless ones like individual hour, minute and second fields from the HA proxy timestamp. We can scroll down to the other event and see that it too is flat and has ECS conflicts like that troublesome top level host field. In Logstash 7, it certainly has been possible to, to transform a pipeline of events so that each is ECS compatible, but it hasn't been pretty. Because many plugins implicitly violate ECS by populating fields without explicit instructions, ensuring your pipeline produces ECS compatible events has traditionally entailed a lot of cleanup work. Let's take a look. We'll repeat the Ceph demo, but with manual ECS remapping this time. We're using the same Ceph encoded log line from last time, but this time our pipeline config is a bit more complex. We add filters to clean up after the standard in input, more filters to remap the Ceph header fields into an ECS compatible field, more mutate filters to remap the various extension fields from our input, and we also add some date filters to make sense of the timestamps in the context of the event's time zone. As you can see, the pipeline has gotten pretty complicated. But when we run it through Logstash, we end up with a nicely nested ECS compatible event, complete with Ceph specific namespace for the spe Ceph specific fields. Next up, we'll repeat the GOIP enrichment in an ECS manner, taking the same simple input. And again, we create a more complex pipeline to do that remapping. We target the results of our GOIP lookup to a metadata field so that we can avoid polluting the top level namespace. And then we remap the fields. And even though the metadata fields aren't included in our output to Elasticsearch, we'll clean up after ourselves here too. The result is ECS geo object properly nested underneath the host whose IP we looked up. And finally, let's repeat the grok demo with manual ECS this time. Again, we use the same inputs as last time. First, we clean up metadata from our input and move the message out of the way to event original, because we know that one of our grok patterns captures to message. But then things get complicated really fast. The cleanup is pattern specific, so we can no longer use a single grok filter to fall through a sequence of patterns. And when I say complicated, I mean it. We have to remap a lot of fields, remove the useless captures, and do a bunch of conversions. And that's just for the first pattern. We then need to attempt other patterns if we haven't succeeded yet. And we have to clean those up too. And if we succeeded at making one match, we need to parse the timestamp too. And that's just for two patterns. The wider the variety of logs this pipeline handles, the more complex this gets. But when we run through our input through this pipeline, the effort pays off and we end up with nicely structured events, including namespacing for vendor specific metrics and all of the appropriate top level ECS fields. As you can see, even with these simple cases, complying with ECS is possible, but it requires you to create verbose pipeline definitions and make those pipelines harder to maintain and introduces more opportunity for human error. We wanted to obviate the need for this cleanup. We wanted ECS compliant pipelines to be simpler and more readable to eliminate the overhead of ECS without forcing our users into a specific schema. We know that ECS by default is the right solution for new users and new pipelines. So it will be on by default in log 8. But we also knew that our solution needed to work for existing users and their body of pipeline definitions, providing a simple opt out for users who maintain complex pipelines that they can't afford to change and a process for migrating existing pipelines for those that do desire to do so. Importantly, we wanted to make this independent of log upgrades so that it doesn't become a barrier to upgrades. In Logstash 7.10, we added an option called ECS compatibility to the plugin API, powered by a new setting, pipeline.ecs compatibility, that can be specified for an individual pipeline in the pipeline's YAML or globally in Logstash YAML. This API bridges the gap between plugin maintainers and our users who are defining pipelines. 
Logstash users can use this API to specify in which mode a plugin should be run for an individual plugin instance, for an entire pipeline, or globally. And plugin maintainers can query this API during plugin initialization to determine the effective mode in which the plugin should be run. We then released a support adapter, which provides a simplified implementation of this API so that when a plugin is run on an older Logstash, the plugin can continue to work. And since that older version of Logstash doesn't provide the pipeline level setting, it's simply off by default. This approach eliminates the risk and overhead of maintaining separate implementations and separate branches and each of dozens of separate plugin repositories. We also added tooling to the support adapter to make side-by-side -side implementations and plugins easier to author, maintain, and test. We then got to work implementing ECS compatibility modes in a host of plugins. There are a few different classes of problems to solve here. Some plugins needed to change the metadata shape. The UDP and TCP inputs, for example, record metadata about the host and port that sent the payload. The file input records metadata about the source file's path. Kafka and RabbitMQ record metadata about the topic or queue that we received the event from, and so on. Some plugins needed to change their implicit schema. The GOIP filter that we've already seen should use ECS's geotype and should also target the result to somewhere meaningful. The Ceph codec should use the elastic standardized Ceph mapping, the same as Beats and Agent. Some plugins needed to add an optional target to allow users to declaratively place the results of a query somewhere specific instead of populating top level fields that are likely to clash with ECS. The JSON and CSV filters and codecs populate fields that are defined in the payload and aren't necessarily known when the plugin starts up. The JDBC and Elasticsearch inputs take the results of a query and target can be helpful here too. The Grok filter really was in a class of its own. It needed a massive overhaul of all of its sub pattern captures. We had to understand the semantic meaning of each capture so that we could appropriately route it to the right ECS field. This was no small undertaking and my teammate Carol Buchek deserves special recognition for his effort on this one. When solving these problems, we implemented ECS compatibility alongside each of the existing implementations. Each plugin has automated tests that ensure it's capable of behaving exactly as it did before we introduced this optional mode. Our team identified 75 Elastic supported plugins for inclusion in this effort. We can use these plugins in ECS compatibility right now in Log 7 to define simple ECS compatible pipelines without all the complex remapping. The following examples require opting in for the pipeline, which can be done by setting pipeline.ecs compatibility in the pipeline's YAML. We've set the setting, so let's run through the same demos and get ECS compatible events more simply. We'll start again with the Ceph example. We have the same input log line, and our config is simple again, just the Ceph codec in the input and the boilerplate to make it work with my demo. When we run log sash, we end up with an ECS compatible event, logically grouping the observer, the agent, the event, and more. We'll do the GOIP enrichment again, this time with ECS compatibility globally enabled. The same simple input as last time, but our config is simple again. We run Logstash once more, and the enrichment is ECS compatible, a geo object nest inside the host whose IP we looked up. And finally, we'll do some ECS compatible grok parsing. We use the same inputs as last time, and our pipeline config is back to being pretty simple. We can regroup the separate grok matches back into a single filter instance, set our event original with the inbound message, and don't need to worry about much else. When we run the pipeline, the results are ECS, just as we expected them to be, without all the complexity of mapping it ourselves. As you can see, we can have ECS simply. In Logstash 8, ECS will be on by default. This means that each and every plugin that implements an ECS compatibility mode will operate in ECS unless configured otherwise. We want our users and customers to be confident in their upgrade path to Logstash 8 and beyond. This is a pretty major change to how many of our plugins work. For our customers and users who are maintainers of Logstash pipelines, what does this mean? When it's time to upgrade to Logstash 8, we encourage you to first upgrade through the finer minor of the 7 series, 717. Because minor upgrades within the 7 series are non-breaking, this step will ensure that you are running the latest version of all plugins and will give you a chance to resolve any deprecation warnings before doing the major version upgrade. Beginning with 710, we emit an entry to the deprecation logger when a plugin attempts to determine the ECS compatibility mode 
and the pipeline hasn't defined it. We want you to know when your existing configuration is in danger of breaking in a future major upgrade, and to give you a chance to fix it first. If you have a pipeline that's complex and you can't risk changing or you can't afford to migrate, you can opt out easily with one simple configuration. The pipeline ECS compatibility setting can be set to disabled for an individual pipeline in the pipeline's YAML or globally for all pipelines in the logstash YAML. This locks in the existing behavior and resolves the deprecation warning. If you'd like to migrate the pipeline to use ECS and gain the benefits of the common schema, it may be helpful to instead resolve the deprecation warnings one plugin at a time in a development environment. To do this, you'll need to understand how running in an ECS compatibility mode changes the behavior of each individual plugin. The docs for each plugin has tables and callouts for the differences. You'll also need to resolve any downstream effects in your pipeline. For example, if you were to configure an instance of the Ceph codec to run an ECS compatibility, a downstream GOIP filter that enriches the IP address of the device address that is coming from Ceph will instead need to enrich the host IP. Similarly, if you have a Kibana visualization that relies on device address, it will also need to be updated to use the host's IP instead. You'll need to make one change, resolve its downstream effects, rinse and repeat until all of the plugins for the pipeline are running in ECS. Once the deprecation logs have been fully resolved in this manner, and you're running the latest 717 available, you can specify pipeline ECS compatibility for the entire pipeline and remove the individual per plugin ECS compatibility declarations. We know that using a common schema for data from disparate sources is really the key to unlocking multiplicative value and hope that you find the elastic common schema to be useful. We're moving toward providing a better default experience for new users and new pipelines with regard to the elastic common schema, and we're doing so without compromising the experience of those of you who own and maintain complex pipelines or who don't target Elasticsearch at all. We're providing the tools to make the migration to ECS independent of Logstash upgrades so that our users have the freedom to either lock in their existing behavior or to begin reaping the benefits of ECS during the seven series. The demo scripts are available at the URL on your screen and in the video description. I would like to thank the Logstash team for their effort. We had a giant surface area to cover and the team worked together to make it happen. Thank you.